Hi guys, I want to talk about another topic today. It seems like I have a lot of things that's on my mind that I want to talk about. And you know, what I've learned is as God lays something on my heart and he deems it necessary that I share it, I am putting it out there and just sharing that with each and every one of you. Um, I'm going to put on my glasses. That's something that I'm going to warn you guys of ahead of time because it's just funny to me that I have to wear it. It's like, I didn't, my sight was bad, I guess. But then it's like, once you start wearing glasses, you absolutely need it. So uh, I'm going to put it on and then I'll take it back off. All right. So what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is spectacles, is church hurt. And um, I think that's a topic that's, you know, very much needed something that we do need to talk about and a lot of people don't talk about it um, they often say well you're bitter and you have things but no this is a reality um, this is a, I'm not even gonna call it church hurt some of it is like church murders you know there's a lot of things that people are doing leadership is doing that's abusing their power and people are staying in churches because they feel like that's what they're supposed to be doing so today I just want to share really briefly I mean uh, just something that was on my heart and go from there. So I'm going to go to 1 Peter chapter 5 and I'm going to read a few things from there. And what it's saying is, um, I, I read KJV. So what it's saying is, uh, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you. So this is um, men and women of God being exhorted on what they need to do as far as taking care of uh, the children in the church or men and women of God within the church, the body of Christ. So this says, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Okay, and here it tells you in verse 5, Likewise, you younger people submit yourselves to your elders, like, you know, respecting your elderly, which we're supposed to do. Um, yes, all of you must be submit. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Chap verse 6 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. All right? So one of the things that I want to talk about is the responsible responsibility of the shepherd or leader in the church. Um, which is an overseer. An overseer is someone that has oversight over things that happens within um, an organization, the body of Christ. They have a certain responsibility to make sure things are running smoothly um, and um, just correcting anything that needs to be corrected. But even while you are an overseer, it is a partnership. It's just like when you go to work, there's someone there who is uh, the boss. Okay, I use myself for example. I running a clinic and I'm in charge. Okay, I have people that work underneath me. I am an overseer. I'm in charge. I can make decisions, things of that nature. I can hire, I can fire. Um, but at the same time, it is a partnership. I oversee, oversee things as it goes on within the department. Um, you know, this... Um, different things but there are people who are assigned to those jobs and my job is I have a partnership with them to still work with them now there are times that they have to come to me for some final decisions um, but there's an exchange and we come up with the best possible plan is there time that you have to make a choice and override certain things yes but overall in any business anything that you're doing it is a partnership I oversee but I do not lord over these people so what is saying here, men and women of God who are in leadership, who are in that pulpit or wherever they are, they have been entrusted with, entrusted with the people of God. We are valuable. It doesn't matter if you're an usher. It doesn't matter if you just clean the bathroom or clean the bathroom. Your thing is God has entrusted 
these individuals with the, the, children, the people of God that needs to be within their ministry, but the whole goal is that everyone works together for, to, for the purpose and the glory of God to win souls, to bring people into the church. And also when you're bringing them in, you're also bringing those people in, in my opinion, to prepare them for their ministry. So a lot of it, when you're in a church, you're in a ministry, you should be getting teaching to prepare you and also to, also to enhance what it is that you already have that Christ has for you. You have to realize that our whole purpose is not just to be in a church doing church things. You have something instilled within you. God has given you something specific to do, and you need to know what that is. You are not just meant to be an usher. You are not just meant to be on a praise team. That's all a part of things that we do corporately within the body of Christ. But ultimately, there's something that God has given you to do, and at the very least, that is to preach the gospel, to tell people about God, to share your testimony. So here, as I told you before, it talks about how they are supposed to treat you, okay? And then we always hear about this humbling. You don't humble yourself to man. It says you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And that, and when you do that, <laughs> I need my glasses. <sighs> Okay, when you humble yourself before the Lord, he will exalt you in due time. In due season, he will exalt you. And you are supposed to cast all your cares upon him. So here's something that I want to say to you guys really quick, okay? Church hurt happens. This is what happens. We're a part of it. Church hurt happens when we get into the church of God and we get this whole scripture mixed up. Where am I? We get this whole scripture mixed up. Okay. First of all, we don't understand the place of the shepherd, the shepherd, men and women of God. Yes, they are worthy of respect. It is a tough job, I'm sure, but they are overseers. Okay. So what a lot of people do, they get into the church and I have been guilty of it as well. We get into the church and what we do is we humble ourselves before man negative what you're supposed to do is humble yourself under the mighty hand of god and he will exalt you he does it it is not your pastor it is not your elder it is not your apostle because it's god that's going to exalt you when you humble yourself before god then he will exalt you and when he exalts you no one can take you down if man puts you somewhere if it takes man it's going to take man man can bring you right back down so it's God, when you humble yourself before the, under the almighty God, he will exalt you in due time. What people do is they humble themselves under man and man is not made to, so in humbling yourself, what you do is you exchange your power. God has given every last one of us dominion and power and authority. What we do is we get in the church and we exchange that. We sacrifice that, okay? And we become living sacrifices for men. So you do that. You give them your power. You humble yourself. And it is not, you humble yourself under man. There's a difference between respect and humbling. I mean, I respect your position, who you are, but I still have my own mind. I still have my own opinion. I am willing to listen to what you have to say, but the first person, the first thing I'm going to do is seek God about what you're saying and have the confidence that I have a relationship with God and I can hear God and will have discernment to do, be directed by God to be in sync with what it is that you are saying. But the mistake that a lot of people make is instead of humbling themselves under the mighty hand of God, they are convinced by this thing that I'm supposed to humble myself under man. So then now you're waiting for man to exalt you in due time. And that is not how that works because the man is flawed. Man has issues. Every person have their own strongholds and principalities and things that they are dealing with. So you cannot put that in their hand. But lots of people come into the church and they exchange their power and give it to this person. Now this person has way too much power and they lost their mind. Why? Because it's not meant for them to have that much power. Okay. So the other thing that it says here is to cast all your cares upon him. Be cast all your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. Well, here's another mistake that we make. We cast all our cares upon man. You start casting all your cares upon 
the ministers and the teachers and you're telling them all your business and you're doing all these different things. No, big mistake. Now, is there counsel? Yes, but you must use wisdom in that. Your first thing must always be going to God first. Go to God. If you're humbling yourself to God and you're casting your cares upon him and really getting in his presence, you cannot go wrong because at that point he is going to, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you and show you and you're going to have discernment. I think a lot of times what people do and why churches are so full and why it is for some people who are doing it for the wrong reasons, a lucrative business is because people are truly searching for God. People are truly wanting to have a relationship with God. But what they have done is that they feel like they have got to humble themselves to men and women of God. They exchange their power and they give what God has given to them, their God-given power and dominion. They give it to this person and they no longer look. They get all enthralled and caught up into the anointing of these individuals and they're no longer looking at God and so they're trying to be in their little clique and they're trying to be accepted it hurt their feelings if the pastor don't talk to them if they do this and then this thing goes on where you have some people who are in their flesh they may have started off in you know being anointed and called by God but at some point it is very easy to get into your flesh being a leader because when you're getting all that attention And when you're getting all these people around you and lauding and lionizing you all the time, if you make a mistake and let your flesh rise up and start getting caught up in how people are treating you and how you're being honored and how you're being recognized, this is when they can slide out and not no longer be walking in Christ. Then when they start to do any leader that is disrespecting and treating their, um, the members of their church with disrespect, I'm telling you, they're no longer walking in Christ. The word of God said there'll be many false teachers and apostles that will go out in the last days. And here's how you're going to know them. You're going to know them by their fruits, period. Let's not complicate it. You're going to know them by their fruits. And now people will make mistakes. No one is perfect. But when you have leaders who are habitually nasty, habitually rude, they manipulate, they play games, they do these little things, you know, things that I have experienced, things that I read about that people have experienced. Uh, first ladies, uh, pastors, uh, leaders, apostles, armor bearers, whoever, they're doing these crazy things to people in the church. They're ostracizing people. They're castigating people. They're forming cliques. They are deliberately doing these cutthroat things in the church. People of God, I'm telling you, when you see that, get away from it. Don't the uh, the because here's the other trap. A lot of people think, oh, they see that. And the other trap of the enemy is to tell you, you have to stay there because if you leave, you can't just, I understand you can't go hopping from church to church, place to place. But let me tell you something. You are not supposed to, when you, when God opened your eyes, you always consider it like this church hurt. And I'm not talking about someone, the pastor is really giving you godly counsel and telling you something that is right and giving you something out of the scripture and saying this is not right and giving you loving guidance and showing you or maybe have to correct you for something that is wrong and that's not church hurt i'm talking about that nasty stuff that goes on in church where people deliberately ignore you they don't talk to you they form groups they pass you they ignore you they do this little nasty stuff they go on it's just this drama that's going on within the church um they play games with you within your ministry, um, within the auxiliaries, they are, you know, doing these little sliding you, causing problems in your family, whatever. They pulling your husband in one direction, your kids, all the stuff lording over you. I mean, I've heard nightmares. People, you need to get out of that because God has opened your eyes and He has shown you the fruit. At that point, once you see it and your eyes has been opened up, it is not just by chance that has happened. And it is your responsibility to, again, cast your cares upon the Lord, humble yourself under his mighty hand, and he will show you what to do next. Okay? But God is not going to tell you to sit in a ministry, sit under pastors and, 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 and whoever who are abusing you. That is not the battle that God is talking about. You have responsibility to get yourself ready, to get yourself seasoned, to get your to get yourself in the right place connected where you can do the things that God has called you to do. You have a responsibility. You will not be able, don't sit in a church, go through a bunch of foolishness, 
talk yourself out of what you see, have fear because they, some churches will put that in you. If you leave, they assume that you have backslidden. If you've walked away, oh, they use that little line. Oh, if they were for us, they would have remained. And if they would not, oh, whatever, <laughs> excuse me for that. It's such foolishness. But you have to just know God for yourself. And the way I can tell you this is because that's what happened with me. I got to know God. I was going through some things and I was sharing what I was going through with someone, and, you know, the leader. And God just told me out of the blue, don't stop talking. Stop sharing. Get in my presence. And I got in the presence of God and he dealt with me and he helped me. He brought me out and he was more real than a person that I can see in front of my face. I got to know God that way. And what God will do when you follow God and you follow him, stop getting caught up in churches and feeling like, oh, I have to be here. No, you don't. I'm not telling you to be, you know, some vigilante out there doing whatever you want to do. But you better realize that there's a lot of churches today that God is not in it. So don't feel bad if you've been to five, six churches and it's a mess. And I'm not saying that you're going to find a perfect church. There is no perfect church, but I'm talking about church mess where the leaders are messy and they're doing these things. I'm telling you, if the head is jacked up, the it's going to flow down. This will flow down into your family. This will flow down into your household. This can affect your children. This can affect your ministry. This can affect your eternity. So you men and women of God, myself, because at the end of the day, in the last day, we will stand before the Father to give an account for ourselves. When God opens your eyes and he shows you, get in his presence and he will show you what you need to do. And you have to have the faith in God to be willing to step away from it. Pray for them as possible because sometimes you don't want to pray for them. A lot of times you want them to fall into a hole somewhere. Sometimes you want to let them have it because I will tell you with Arlene, I'm the type of person, my nature has been, I will cuss you out. I will let you have it. You know, uh, one of the things God had to deliver me from is my mouth. You know, there's just something where I'm nice with mine. I could really hurt your feelings. I could let you not even cussing you out, but I will slice you and dice you. And that is a bad, a very bad thing. And thanks be to God, he has delivered me from that. But your flesh is always there. When you get in a church and you get somewhere where people are doing so much stuff, they're acting so fleshy that you feel like your flesh is going to rise up. You might smack somebody with a hymn book or say something that make them want to jump off of a bridge later on. No, ma'am. No, sir. That is not where you need to be. And it's not that you are running, but you need to get in front, get before God. Because church is not a place for drama. Church is not a place that, and people will tell you, oh, well, you can still go and raise your hands. And yes, but you, you have to realize there's a principality and a power there. There is more than likely something that is happening there, especially if it's the leadership. Nah, you are not going to get nothing out of that. What you're going to get, God is going to show you some lessons. He will teach you some things. You, He may have you there for a certain period of time, maybe. But at the end of the day, the Bible tells us to come out from among them. Not to just light and dark has no place together. So you need to be able to listen to the Lord. I'm not telling people, I'm not encouraging people to run away and to leave. But what I'm telling you, open your eyes. Some things are just common sense. You want to always be led by the spirit, first of all, okay? But he also gave you a mind. Not to just be moved by your emotions, per se. But you need to have discernment. And if God says to move, move. People of God, it is not, we're in the last days no one has time to be sitting and going through church hurt, meaning you're sitting there and you're exposing yourself to foolishness. You don't have the courage to hear from God for yourself because that is the first thing. You know what the right thing is. You probably have always known what the right thing is. But because there is a thing that tells you only they can hear it from God, then you stay there and you allow yourself to go through certain things. Know God for yourself. If you know that you are truly walking in, in the things of God and you're doing the things that God has called you to do, you're hearing him, you're spending time in his presence, he will not lead you wrong. Follow 
the, the, the instructions of God. Don't allow yourself to be held captive within a ministry because God has great things for you to be great things for you to do. And what he has for you to do is not his great things and the things that he has is not for you to be sitting and bickering and fighting and going through stuff and going through drama and being uncomfortable. That is not the will of God for your life. So know him. He's a good shepherd. He's a chief shepherd. He has great things for you. So take responsibility for your soul, the condition of your mind, the condition of your spirit, not only for yourself, but your family. But most of all, that you will walk in the calling that he has ordained for you. Bye.